Hello everybody, welcome back to the Hearthstone Champions League. We're about to jump into the winner's match of Group D between Cypher and Oskaka. The winner of this game moves on to the playoff stage and comes out of Group D in first place. Once again, I'm TJ. Joining me is Protohype from Follow Esports. You said you didn't think that this is how the group would play out with Firebat being eliminated first, but that's exactly how it played out. Protohype, what do you think? Yeah, I I suspect that uh, it was perhaps uh, a bit misinformed, maybe a bit wishful. Uh, Firebat, you know, the one of the <laughs> one of the best players in the game, but maybe maybe Hearthstone wears on us all at times, and uh, you know, it'll uh, you'll have days like that as, yeah. as anybody as uh, the greatest player ever, or you know, the Joe Schmo. You'll have <laughs> good days and bad, and uh, not the best for Firebat, but still very well played. And uh, looking forward to to seeing this next bash between Cipher and Oskaka, especially this uh, this muckler that he has he has played on turn three that we've seen and uh, jested about so much. Yeah, the King Mukla in Patron Warrior, New Age Patron, it is incredibly New Age, <laughs> very progressive. Yeah, <laughs> lots so, of bananas, <laughs> lots of lots. Of, maybe it was a, a joke at Stan Sipka. Oh right, right. Very, uh, he was very tailored. Just yeah. playing King Mukla. He, he, here's <laughs> some more bananas. And uh, it's actually going to do some work. He's got the Death Bite to follow it up to protect it. Nerubian Weblord. Cypher looks really confused. <laughs> yeah. Just a, a little. The, uh, the contemplative suggestion of the, uh, the singer. <laughs> it's like, okay. But, uh,. Weblord, unfortunately, uh, reducing uh, Cypher's ability to Harrison on, uh, on the next turn, but he will be able to kill it off if you'd like to. Mm -hmm. So he can proc this in and play Execute, but then he's not really doing anything else. He's just playing the Armor Smith. And, uh, I mean, I guess that would be his play regardless of what came out of this piloted Shredder. So the Nerubian Weblord not really making that big of a difference. Sure. It sort of just limits his options. If you say didn't want to execute this turn, <laughs> sure, sure. He just got the laser at Cypher's face. <laughs> okay. Everybody's in on the buckle joke. Yeah, Pro production's having a little bit of fun, it seems. <laughs> a solid hand though from uh, from Oskaka, uh, especially in in this warrior mirror mm -hmm. uh, where yeah. Oskaka is the aggressor. Uh, he does have the ability to. Alkalite ping, get some extra cards if you would like to on this turn. Um, seeing that Cypher did not have a weapon or anything of the sort uh, to to kill off his Mugla, he would have had exact damage uh, with the Death Bite to finish off his Web Lord and kill off the Mugla, but not the case. And uh, perhaps Oskaka would like to go for a tempo frothing into Armorsmith on this turn? What do you think? Yeah, I like that. It's whether or not he wants to go for a utility turn with Acolyte or a pressure turn. And uh, this allows him to hold on to his Despite in case something like a turn 5 uh, Sludge Belcher comes out. But right, right. Uh, Harrison Jones is going to be pretty much... Uh, there's not really any other options there. The one thing is that uh, the weapon removal does give this Froth and Berserker quite a bit of uh, extra damage. And yes, it does. If, oh, Scott has another weapon to follow that up, which we see he doesn't. Could have snowballed out of control for, for Cypher, potentially. So, definitely see. Oh, Scott got just all creatures in his hand. No Whirlwind effects to go with the this Grim Patron. But he does have that second Froth and Berserker if he wants to. Play something like Froth and Berserker, then Cruel Taskmaster, his own Armorsmith to take out the Harrison Jones. He's got quite a few options. Sure, sure. Um, I suspect he probably won't commit uh, the second Frothing to the board with, uh, with one already there. But uh, probably... I like uh, I like where you're at with the uh, the Taskmaster onto the Harrison. The armor doesn't really matter too much in this matchup. Uh, Oskaka is definitely going to be the uh, the aggressor for the considerable future. So uh, perhaps just a a shredder and a smash for that armor smith, uh, getting the value on the on the damage and getting the extra extra points of damage on the uh, frothing into Cypher's life total. So um, might just play on curve here. He really wants that extra damage. Oh wow! Okay. He's seen he's seen an execute already, so sure, sure. It's possible no, that's that a he, fair point. Yeah, yeah. He, it's possible that he just wants to go all in, and there's going to be a lot of trading going on. The second father berserker is going to get buffed up quite a bit. 
It says put the most immediate power on the board, and we'll see what Cypher can draw. He doesn't have any direct removal. Yeah, yes. and behind with the Shredder behind this, that's actually acting like a, a taunt mechanism almost. Like you would play a, a Belcher behind uh, one of your one of your higher cost minions. So I, that's that's a really solid play. I, I guess I underestimated the uh, the power level of just having both droppings with that one XQ gun. Yeah, and now Cypher has to either take the damage with the Fiery War Axe or try and dig for some removal with the shield block, potentially. This is a rough position to be in. You're staring at a board that's uh, 15 damage just on the board. That's no pretty doubt. crazy. And even if he had the ability uh, on 7 mana or something to, to play the Armorsmith on this turn and Brawl, uh, which he can't, um, it, it would still end up being uh, potentially disastrous from... From Cypher's perspective, with uh, the ability for both Rothings to make it on the other side, uh, with that Armorsmith not on the table anymore, but uh, really the only play he has, I think, is Brawl. Uh, if he takes the, another 8 damage with the weapon and uh, you know, opens himself up to just about anything from Oskaka's perspective, uh, it could get pretty hairy there. But the uh, the four the four health Rothing uh, making it through the Brawl on the other side, and Oskaka will uh, most likely follow this up with the Shredder. Yep. And a medium result for Oskaka from that brawl. Uh, I guess this Froth and Berserker isn't vulnerable to execute, but it's less damage, so less pressure. Sure. But it's better than the Cruel Taskmaster coming out of the brawl, so uh, I'd say he's probably reasonably happy with this. No removal still picked up for Cypher, but he does have that shield block, and with 7 mana, it gives him a little bit more options with the rest of his mana. Yeah, definitely. Um, having the ability to rip a, a shield time off the top, perhaps, so... I don't think he's playing double brawl. Uh, probably wouldn't have the ability to do that with the, uh, the aggressive shell that we've seen. So uh, really just looking for, for solid spot removal from this position. Um, the, the four health frothing actually putting in putting in a lot of work here. Uh, maybe maybe representing less damage, but still having uh, the ability to inadvertently dodge both of those fiery war axes and uh, Cypher will just go with the shredder to contest it. Yeah. And... No whirlwind effect picked up from Hoskaka yet, so he can't make any crazy big frothing berserkers. Twenty plus damage in a single turn, not going to be possible. Rest in pieces. Nothing unfun going on here. <laughs> <laughs> well said. We're all fun all the time in New Age Patron. And with a uh, with a shredder, Hoskaka may very well just opt to run the shredder into uh, into ciphers. And try and look for uh, something to kill off of the Alkalite, or perhaps just uh, not have his Alkalite die. And uh, he's going to play the Armorsmith first. Um, he does have 8 mana, so that's, that's a fair compromise for this turn. Uh, would like to see him throw this Alkalite into a. Uh... Oh wow, is that a Garrison Commander? It is. Something uh, we don't see very oh, often. No. Can... No. It's no. basically a poor man's Jessica True Heart. <laughs> Maybe not quite as good, but he wants he wants to be. That's what Just Carter uh, yeah, That's the poor man. Yeah, yeah. And it's just a boy. Yeah, he, he actually decides not to play the Drake Corsair, so he uh, did have an option to do that instead of playing the second Acolyte of Pain to maybe try and protect his Fall Berserker a little more. But Oskaka, he, he's thinking, well, I mean, if he didn't, he's using Execute. If he didn't have an Execute the last couple turns, it's probably likely that he won't have one this turn. Right. Uh, he'd get punished by revenge. True, true. That is but a card that people have uh, have been playing in the in the past. It is a card that exists in the game. <laughs> in the Hearthstone. Yeah. Yeah, but a lot he... of people were actually including that as a one of as a pretty popular one of in Control mm -hmm. Warrior for a while. But sometimes your life total just sits so high between Shield Maidens and Justicar that it, it's just not a uh, super relevant solution sometimes. Yeah, I think he may have forgot about the bananas. I know I would have if I played them that long. Yeah. Ah, crap. I, <laughs> I, I did play Mukla. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, uh, I don't know about that. Uh, the Alkalite play. I think I would have liked to see Defender, but I think uh, if he... Hmm. That's interesting. If he uh, if he had taunted it up, I'm not sure how he kills the Frothing, uh, noting that he had already used the Brawl. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. Uh, I think he may have forgotten about the Bananas on that chain. Ooh. These that's Armorsmiths. <laughs> Are yeah, slightly problematic. Uh, he does have 14 damage this turn, so that would put him one damage off lethal, I believe. So he throws the two in and has the nine. Uh, yeah, it'd be pretty close, but 
not lethal this turn. Uh, yeah. So it's definitely proving to be problematic. Oh, no, it'd be even more than that because he gained two armor from yeah, each yeah. armor smith. So uh, from armor the whirlwind smith. effect, he would gain four total armor to bring his health total up to 17. And so it'd be three damage off, not one damage off. Armor smiths work very well in pairs. Yes, they do. As all Freeze Mage players know. Yeah. And old patron players know. <laughs> sure enough. It looks like he's just going to go for it? Yeah, they're... I kind of like this play, honestly, because there, there's so little to be doing that's uh, really effective on this turn. Uh, patron really not doing anything without uh, an inner rage multiplier or anything like that. Uh, he does have the weapons uh, suited up, so even if he did have it, uh, just runs an armor smith in, gains some additional armor, and most likely clears it off with the weapons. Yeah. Or a spot removal spell. And uh, really, the the best the best go button here is is definitely the ground play. Yeah, and once again, Oskaka realizes no execute in the hand. He's had to be creative with how he removes these big threats. So uh, this Grom will stick. And is there a way? For Cypher to survive, he can play Shield Maiden, he can armor up, that would bring him to 10. He could gain 4 more armor by throwing in these uh, armor smiths to the Master Swordsmith. Right. Uh, and he could kill off the uh, armor smith on the other side with his Fire War X. So uh, it looks like that is going to be the play. I don't see anywhere else which would put. Scythe, or sorry, Oskaka, two damage off lethal, I believe, after everything is said and done. Yeah, I believe you're right. That would be, uh, four damage off those. He killed the Armorsmith first. Yes. And, you know, despite the fact that he's going to live for another turn, uh, he's, I guess what he's waiting for is probably a Belcher at this point. Yeah. Uh, I can't, oh. can't think of much else. Well, that's going to do it. Oskaka uh, with the just... weapon off the top. Yeah. We take those. Yeah, that was really well played by Oskaka. I'm actually pretty impressed. Uh, there was a lot of tough decisions in, in that game. Yeah, no he doubt. navigated it really well. and it, Every point of damage matters at the end. So Oskaka ends up finding lethal, finding the damage he needed, takes the win with Patron, goes up 1-0 to zero in the series. Yeah, pretty impressive take. Um, I think the, the only questionable decision point we saw was maybe the, the taunt, not in front of the frothing, but I'm sure he had his reasons. And... Uh, wound up working out in his favor with the uh, the ground lethal. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And so Oskaka does have Paladin and Druid remaining. And Cypher has still has all three of his decks. Warrior, Druid, and Shaman is Cypher's third deck. Cypher just left. He's like, I'm out of here, guys. Cypher, come back. And it's Oskaka's going to throw out the Seeker Paladin in this match. Pretty strong deck, I'd say. Maybe that's uh, maybe that's why he left. Saw Paladin. He was just, I'm done. Sometimes when I'm playing ladder and I'm getting on a losing streak and I see Paladin once again, <laughs> I'm and they definitely play like, in that boat. They play a secret turn one, even though secret turn one such a weak play. I'm like, oh, God, <laughs> I'm out of here. Die, die. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> We're good. As a uh, a towel, perhaps for the. Uh... The sweaty palms that Paladin induces. Or a blanket because it's maybe, cold maybe in most nail. parts of the world. Yeah. <laughs> that seems like a more practical solution. Where's Cypher from? Is he uh, English, British? Uh, I know he's from Europe. That's all I know. Yeah. I should know more because I, was, I think I was on a team with him in the past. <laughs> I think I was on a team <laughs> with him in the past. No, it was no, either no, this no, Cypher or another no. Cypher. Never got, to know, never got to know him too well, but he's a good guy. Great player for sure. Yep. Um... Yep, player from the United Kingdom. He is. I believe at this time of year it is quite cold in the UK. It is in the Northern Hemisphere. Not as cold as Oskaka's card choice on Muckle and Eddie. <laughs> what a segue! Ice cold, dude. <laughs> like the Coronas in the back. If someone probably dared him. They're like, hey man, I'll give you 50 bucks <laughs> if you put Muckle in all your decks. This sounds like a Hearthstone bet that would be made in the tournament. Probably Zixo. <laughs> He's sick, so. It's okay. problematic right now, though, because those bananas won't do that well. So it looks like Oskaka is just going to go ahead and coin off the true silver champion to deal with this armor smith right away. Yeah, really one of the only 
one of the only ways Paladin has to efficiently deal with uh, mm. both an armor smith on an open board. So I uh, definitely agree with that. And yeah. a shredder coming down next turn would actually be quite good uh, from Oskaka's perspective, if not uh, if not the best, because Cipher does have those two weapons. Yeah. Lots of sounds going on. <laughs> Someone's playing with the board. <laughs> this is a really awkward turn. You're one turn away from being able to Harrison Jones down this uh, true silver champion. So, uh, Cypher is just going to give the illusion that he has plays here. Well, Alright, okay, never mind. He is actually going to uh, attack in and equip the Despite. Uh, what is he expecting on turn four that he wouldn't be able to kill the fire war axe? Hmm. That's a good point. That's um, interesting. Shredders do the usual play, and yeah, you, yeah, and you I do can't. have a way to deal with that already. Right. Um, uh, perhaps Murloc Knight uh, coming down on on four on curve, but typically that's not something you would see in a hybrid secret paladin deck. That's not usually something you have room for. I know people have tried to kind of uh, force it in as a one of, but mm -hmm. not the not the best thing that you could hope for but maybe maybe regardless uh, because he had the two weapons he figured why take the chance yeah very true and Oskaka knows that this warrior deck does run Harrison Jones but I doubt he's going to feel inclined to attack with this true silver okay changed my mind he really doesn't want to give that Harrison Jones value for sure after seeing it once uh, it's definitely a, a solid play around and, uh, definitely reminiscent of the uh, of the world champ yeah. There's no point in giving your opponent a free turn five play and that card to go with it. So, uh, Also, this deck is about pressure. It's it's not so... It is about board control too, but pressure can be a big deal. Very true. Just since he knows that if he plays Paladin Shredder here, Cypher is going to have to swing a few times with this Death Bite, take even more damage to try and clear the board. And Oskaka does have those big threats as we get to turn seven, turn eight to follow it up and potentially close out the game. I'd say he's in a decent spot at the moment. For sure, um, activating this activating this death bite or uh, putting it on the second charge for next turn will actually be oh interesting. Uh, Cipher opting to get the draw and go for the double slam on the first target and not take four damage, uh, realizing that Oskaka does have quite a bit of pressure. Um, every every point of health matters, as we said. Yeah. And uh, Mukla now going to be much worse for Oskaka. Yeah. Cypher just like shakes his head. He's just like, why? <laughs> two decks? You put Muckle in two decks? Maybe three. This guy's like, I'm the world champion. Deal with it. <laughs> that would have been fantastic. He just like slowly puts on sunglasses as he does it. <laughs> oh, man. It's not like Oskaka at all either. Oh, very not. <laughs> it's a very calm and soft spoken individual. Yeah, I had the, had the pleasure of meeting him and having dinner with him at BlizzCon. He was. Uh, Truly remarkable human being, honestly. A very, very stand-up individual. Yeah. For sure. And no way to deal with this knife juggler, though. At least not from what I see. So Cypher probably just going to go ahead and play the uh, Shredder here. Armor up. And he's taking a lot of damage. He's at 17 health already, effectively. Yeah, I think he may be comfortable doing it uh, based on the lack of out of hand damage that Paladin usually retains, minus uh, barring a boom into into Tyrion weapon or what have you. But uh, I think he's pretty comfortable using his life total as a resource with the shield block. Uh, perhaps that's something I would be comfortable doing. But you know, Cipher likes to live on the edge and uh, oh. try and juggle down this uh, this pile of sugar. Unbelievable! Look at that sniper juggle. If he juggles this Defias Ringleader too, oh my goodness. Okay. Whew. <laughs> I was getting a little bit He's nervous good. He's there. Not that good. Yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe bluffing a, a noble sacrifice inadvertently on this particular thing. Although Actually, I don't think that, uh, that changes his play very much. Knife juggler hitting weapons wouldn't that be bad? He, him being bad because he's trying to hit the apple that's on your head. Whose head is it on? Is it on the oh, warrior's sure, head? Sure. Or is it on the minion's head? I, don't I know. think it'd be on the minion's head. He's a, he's a defiant string leader. Down the rabbit hole we go. <laughs> <laughs> on intuitive discussions. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much most of my discussions <laughs> when I cast, but. You should do, should do voiceovers for Dr. Phil or something. <laughs> Dr. Phil! <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, 
Whoa, he's just... <laughs> Man, you weren't kidding. He's really bound and determined to, to smork this down. Oh, no. He's dead? Is he dead? Oh, <laughs> guys? <laughs> oh, no. So he does have eight damage on the table. Tapping the banana up the armor smith, which would otherwise be a really solid play. I think he's uh, one off, right? Seven, yeah. Eight. It was two off, actually. But... Two off. Uh, looks like the boom's gonna come down regardless. Man, I can't believe how how aggressive he took that. And uh, honestly, it maybe maybe missequence that. Uh, just like wanting to attack in with the defias first in case it's not the noble sack. Mm -hmm. But either way, probably wouldn't have worked out due to the fact that Avenge uh, going onto that mini bot. But I think uh, I think maybe he wanted to do that the other way around if he was bound and determined to take that damage. Yeah, so Scott Guy has to make the choice here whether or not he wants to kill off this armor smith or go face because there is a death bite. Sure. Uh, it does have death rattle, but uh, judging by how Scott Guy's played so far, it feels like just hitting him in the face. And yeah, this play definitely indicates he is going to hit him in the face. And he does take out the Defy Spring Leader just to make sure that maybe he hedges bets against Brawl slightly more and also not give him. Uh, the extra armor for... Well, I guess it is giving him the armor anyway, but... Hmm. Protecting the Divine Shield, potentially. Yeah, I think Oskaka's math is definitely right here. He's done He's done so much damage to himself in Cypher has. And, uh, you know, with the Tyrion to follow this up, even if the Armorsmith gets pretty optimal value, uh, even the optimal scenario for, for Cypher isn't really that great uh, from his perspective, at least with, with the amount of life he wants to be gaining. Yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting how... How much, uh, how much damage he took, or voluntarily took, rather, with, with those weapons early on in the game. But, you know, mm -hmm. gotta do what you gotta do. Gotta do what you gotta do. And... Armor up, shield slam, and he's gonna have to just hope that these boom bots don't just destroy him. Because there's not gonna be that much that he can do, and... Okay. This is a little bit of a, uh, of a cute play. He's going to be able to clear the board, but he goes down to seven. Potential lethal. Okay. Okay, well, okay. guaranteed <laughs> lethal with Consecration off the top. They throw out the well plates, and with that, Oskaka takes a another 2-0 lead. Oskaka's tearing through this. Yeah, not surprising, to be honest. Uh, Oskaka, you know... <laughs> Really unbelievable player, and uh, definitely proving that at, at the World Championships this year. And uh, definitely expect him to make it out of this group. But you know, we'll see if Cipher has anything to say about that. Yep. Winner of this match does come out of the group in first place. Both of these players are 1-0 so far in the groups. Uh, Loser isn't out even yet. They still have another chance. They'll move down to face Stan Sifka in the decider match, even if they lose. So. Uh, Oskaka on match point here, moving into the Druid matchup. This is going to be Druid versus Warrior. Cypher really wants to find a win with this Warrior. Having some trouble, though. Definitely, and certainly uh, not helping is the uh, the Shredder and Muckle-centric strategies that, uh, <laughs> that Oskaka mm. seems to be adhering to for, for this particular tournament. Uh, I, I honestly really want to ask him about that card. I can't tell, can't tell if it's a bad bet or just a uh, calculated decision, but I Feels like he's just... Someone, he, he heard, saw that thread a long time ago where, oh, all Secret Paladin does is they play the highest statted minions on every turn. <laughs> it's like, is like, I'll show you the highest yeah. statted minion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's pretty funny. As we've seen before, Agra Druid coming out for Oskaka. Um, no, no wild turn two plays, or turn one plays, rather, uh, with the Knife Juggler or anything like that. But going to opt to go for the Knife Juggler on two. Uh, holding the innervate, perhaps saving that for for a lothab or a uh, or a combo later in the game. Cypher yeah, uh, slam it and uh, not having any weapons on turn two. Yeah, if he this way, if he innervates out the lothab, his curve is a lot smoother because he sure, can play sure. lothab this turn and then play Paladin treader on the next turn. So yeah, makes it super awkward because now playing lothab on turn three against a uh, warrior with a coin. Makes it so they can't coin out a death spite, and it makes their turns a little bit awkward. So now he's going to be able to play the shredder and start piling on the damage, turning on the heat. <laughs> that uh, that captain spirit sitting in the driver's seat, feeling pretty good about himself. Yeah. <laughs> right. Pretty interesting. Uh, pretty interesting lineup from uh, from Oskaka. This aggro dude seems to be putting in work. 
And uh, the Keeper definitely going to be helping with that on um, this next turn. Keeping the peace. Yeah. But Cypher does have quite a bit of removal here. He's got he both weapons, he's got slam, he's got Belcher to block damage. Even though he, he took some pressure early on, he's still in a pretty decent spot, I'd say, moving forward into the next couple of turns. Agadruid does run out of resources very fast, and if they don't put on a lot of pressure early on, they find themselves in rough positions where they just don't can't find enough damage to close out the game. Yeah, that's a solid point. Um, Cypher does have a lot of tools that you would like as a, uh, as a warrior player to be having against uh, Aggro Druid, but Oskaka, Oskaka still has uh, still has that Shredder on the board. Um, going to be pretty difficult for Cypher to remove it. He may opt to just go for the Belcher this turn, but there are quite a few outs that, uh, that Oskaka has that he should definitely be worried about if he decides to go for that mm -hmm. bit, uh, bit more aggressive line as opposed to, uh, you know, just clearing with, with weapons and slamming off that uh, juggler. Yeah. Hacker Druid seems so, like, feast or famine to True. me. Either you win in with, like, fireworks on, like, turn <laughs> five, or you just get blown out of the game by removal, and it feels like it's impossible for you to win. Right. And uh, this is sort of one of those games. Oh, Scott has managed to put on a little bit of pressure, but it just seems like he, the card's in his hand. It, just his his momentum has been completely stopped here. Sure. Um, with the it's a bit it's a bit hard to see, but with the keeper uh, going into turn seven, if he if he decides not to play it and just go with the uh, the damage that he can take on this turn, mm -hmm. yeah yeah I like that. I really like the swipe face play. Swipe you're never going to get a ton of value with uh, in aggro druid. Um, he is putting on solid damage. He may opt to just not attack with the goblin stalker perhaps. Maybe hold off the death bite uh, for a turn, and he does. I wow, man. I <laughs> Oskaka, man. He's he's uh, he's something. And having a uh, having this keeper on the following turn uh, for a Belcher, if if Cipher really wants to be playing that, uh, will be really solid. Um, he does. He definitely does have the uh, the capability to still take this game with the Lepernome damage. No. Oh yeah, Savagery. And uh, I'm wondering if Cipher would like to play back to back Belchers or just. Uh, Maybe try to take a more aggressive line with the hero power and the shredder. The Gelbin actually is like an MVP. In this, yeah, yeah. In this, it's, it's not able to be removed. It's not able to be attacked by the uh, Despite, second charge of the Despite. So, um, is there any cards that give him lethal damage here? Not quite. But he's getting close. The thing is, is the Sylvanas. Could beat out a keeper for these shredders, and if that happens, Oskaka could find himself in a rough spot. We'll see if he, you know, thinks of of that in his in his play here. Sure, I think Oskaka may may end up with the realization that Honest just has five HP, and uh, having having that much health uh, really lends itself to not being that good against Aggro Druid in this scenario. I'm kind of surprised. That Cypher didn't go for the, the additional hero power since he was killing off that Lepernome. Yeah, Cypher seems to be kind of kind of jostling back and forth as if he wasn't sure on his play, but it does end up uh, working out like he said. He does, uh, he does end up jamming the Keeper on the table thinking that uh, Cypher doesn't have a comparable answer like like a Belcher per se. Mm -hmm. Definitely definitely a solid play by Cypher holding on, holding on to those Belchers, but uh, you know, I, I, I have to question the uh, I have to question not uh, hero powering every turn, but at the same time, uh, it worked out. Yeah. And Oskaka now, he's... It's, he's in a rough spot now, because Cypher makes the read that using Fire War Axe to kill off this Darnass Aspirin as opposed to armoring up would put Oskaka on... Uh, eight mana instead of nine, so combo wouldn't be his possibility. Oskaka has been holding on to that card for a long time. That was in the sure, far sure. left of his hand. Well, it was in the middle for a while, but he has had it for a long time. So, realizing that this is probably going to be the better line, and with Sludge Belcher protecting his board, second keeper is unlikely. And Fellweaver facing up against a Sludge Belcher is not the best thing that you want in the world because it's got to get through two taunts if it wants to hit the face. 
where right. every fell reaver dreams of going when it's first bo- born, <laughs> created, drawn. <laughs> All of the above. It's just a card. It's just a card. Yeah. Um, did you ever play yeah. World of Warcraft? I did. So you know? Do you remember? Did you play in the Burning Crusade? Uh, I did not. I think I came in at Wrath of the Lich King. Okay. Well, fell reaver in Burning Crusade used to walk around one of the zones and just kill you if you were questing. Oh, wait, yeah, I remember people talking yeah. about that. Yeah, it yeah. was just a giant card that used to just walk around the zone, and if you weren't paying attention... <laughs> in Hearthstone like, hard form, even then. Yeah, yeah, if you if you weren't paying attention, like if you were killing a boar or something and you weren't looking behind you, Fell Reaver could just... Well, it, it, the ground, like, shook around you, but sure, if you sure. really like weren't paying attention, then <laughs> it could kill you, and sounds that's like sort of... Sure. Yeah, yeah it's sort of how it is in, in Hearthstone, too. If you're really not paying attention, Fell Reaver will kill you. Unfortunately for Oskaka, Cypher definitely paying attention in this game. And honestly, I'm pretty impressed with the uh, with the play from Cypher. He, he yeah. played that really close to the vest, but you know he, he did the math, and he knew Oskaka couldn't have lethal, and he came out on the, on the other side with those yeah. punches. He went into general chat before, and they told him exactly where Fell Reaver was, so he just quested in a different area. It's basically, basically an, an, an analogy for that matchup. <laughs> Rock solid. Rock solid. All right, jumping into game number four. Cypher stays alive, but this aggro druid still is pretty potent. And there's the shaman. See if he can do some work. Yeah, not the uh, not the most graceful openings that aggro druid has ever ever mustered. No pun intended. But definitely uh, gonna throw those those heavier cards back. Living roots into knife juggler. Definitely solid against against shaman. Uh, Living roots a decent answer to the shaman here at power on multiple turns but cypher having uh having double totem golem uh, unfortunately obviously unable to be played on on back-to-back turns and a uh, and a feral spirit so his hands uh looking a bit clunky but he does have uh, some solid stats nonetheless yeah so if he plays totem golem now he delays his second totem golem but he can still play feral spirit on curve sure yeah yeah so honestly I think he has to play the one. Yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, like it's it's too brutal <laughs> if that uh, if those creatures get on, yeah, unanswered. Yeah, especially there's so many crucial, uh, big threat turn two plays that druids have, sure. aggro druids have with knife dragon and darnassus aspirant that you can't really afford to have live. So you can you know forego one turn of of playing nothing in order to try and contest the plays that could just lose you the game from the aggro druid's perspective. For sure. And Cypher looking a, a bit more comfortable in this match than he was in the last uh, against against Oskaka's aggro druid. A uh, scary deck and a scary player for sure. But uh, let's see, he has one mana, and he rips the second Feral Spirit. Wow, this hand not really improving in quality for Cypher, but uh, having a Feral Spirit come down on the next turn with, with no uh, pressure from Oskaka's hand will, uh, will be quite good. Yeah, I'd, I'd say so. Yeah, Oskaka doesn't have a way to deal with it. I mean, he could, like, Savage Roar, but Swipe doesn't deal with it effectively. For sure. And if you play Feral Spirit this turn, you still have Totem Golem for the following turn, even being overloaded for two. So, right. uh, definitely, uh, this is a spot you want to be in. The Aggro Druid's definitely going to use more resources than you to remove these cards. So, sure, uh, sure. It, and Oskaka doesn't pick up anything that he can really play. No creatures, nothing that allows him to trade up. So he is going to Savage Roar. Yeah, Savage Roar definitely solid here. Probably the best it'll ever be in this game. And, you know, suddenly it's not looking so bad for Oskaka. The pickup of that Lothab and the uh, the Druid of the Claw in 5. Uh, it's definitely cards that you want to be drawing when your opponent is uh, overloaded and disadvantaged. So if he uh, does decide uh, to charge in this, this Druid of the Claw, it won't be too bad. Although he may, may opt to take the... Uh, Avoid the lightning storm line if he is uh, if Cipher does manage to fit one in his deck and uh, just swipe. But I think uh, I suspect we'll just see something charge in and kill off that totem gold. Oh, he goes for love wow. instead. Yeah. Oskaka well, likes the flexibility of Drew the Claw. It feels like right, uh, right. a lot of times when he has the option to play Drew the Claw on turn five, he won't if he has another thing that he can play. That for makes sure, sense, sure. and so. That, I mean, and I like that. It puts more power on the board. Well, more attack on the board right now. And also, he, he still keeps the Druid of the Claw as that flex tool later on to do a little bit of extra damage. The old 8 damage burst on turn 9 with Druid of the Claw <laughs> charge and swipe. 
Yeah, and having a, a five fives worth of stats on turn five is is no joke. And uh, I was kind of definitely realizing the power of that play. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Lothab, Lothab does actually seem better there, especially considering Cypher's uh, hand composition at the moment. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, it's a lot of direct damage in Oskaka's hand. The thing is, can he find a way to piece it together well enough right, right. to win? Let's see. We could opt to go for the the shredder line, where he runs the uh, the two one ones in the hero power into the flame song totem, which is actually quite solid. Um, Zombie Chow not really doing anything against that board mm -hmm. per se. Even with the lightning storm, still getting the health back. His board's still getting cleared. Um, nothing too threatening from that perspective. So, you know, I think I think Shredder's pretty solid here. He probably just wants to play on a curve. Yeah. Another option would be to Druid the Call charge in the Flame Tongue to push the extra two damage with the one ones, but he didn't go for that line last turn, so sure, sure, probably not going to go for the line this turn. We just talked about his play style with Druid of the Claws. This definitely fits that, and yeah, and he won't have a, a ton of good opportunities to play Shredder uh, later in the game either on curve as well. So hmm. definitely some uh, some tight play. From the the champ and Cipher picking up a, a fire guard destroyer. I think this he's gonna feel really inclined to hex this pile of treader though. So sure, sure. Hex plus feral spirit I think is definitely gonna be the play, and make sure to attack the one one first to make sure that he takes the power off the board, which I like. Right, right. Ooh. Does that change anything? Not really. Hmm. Oskaka realizing swipe swipe not the best here. Lots of toughness on, on Cypher's side of the board. Nothing really really solid coming from from swipe on this particular turn. Uh, force would end up being a, a clear through the taunts that would allow him to uh, start stacking up some damage on the following turns, but uh, Cypher Realizing that, uh, you know, Oskaka is going to have to tap out to deal with these. Uh, Drew not having the best answers to Feral Spirit, and uh, he's going to be able to capitalize on this turn from Oskaka with Fire Guard Destroyer. Yeah, Oskaka really wants to get these taunts out of the way ASAP. Definitely. So, uh, and this opens him up next turn if he fits in a hero power. Then all of a sudden he's looking on a Savage Savage or to win the game. Whoa, the Jeweled Scarab. Nice. Could allow the funny thing is we're spectating Oskaka, um, and spectator mode doesn't allow you to see the cards, the options for discovering. Oh, really? Yeah, so it's, it's really a discovery. Oh. Yeah, so we we don't get to see the options, which is unfortunate. It's exciting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> eventually I think Blizzard will add in sure, sure. for spectator mode, but it adds a lot of potential for. Abuse, I suppose. So it's a really hard thing to do. The moose is loose. Yeah. Um, an interesting turn from Oskaka's perspective. I, I can't imagine that... Hmm. He has... 14 damage... In his hand. Correct. And playing two keepers this turn would be would be pretty savage from, from his perspective. He might just start throwing all of his damage at the face. Yeah, like just a uh, double keeper in face or silencing, perhaps. Okay, this is sort of a middle of the road play. He sort of protects his keepers. Sure, sure. Having already used the savage array, that's uh, that's an interesting read because you know it, it would be really tight for him to uh, fit that damage through. Uh huh. Probably not something he wants to bet his uh, tournament life on. No, definitely not. So seven available mana for Cypher. Let's see. Probably doesn't want to hex one of these Keepers of the Grove because then he'll be really vulnerable to something like a Fell Reaver coming down on the board. He could try and Jeweled Scarab and see if he can pick up something that's going to help him out. Of course, Jeweled Scarab will give you a three-drop creature. He'll discover it. But we are in the dark as to what his choices are. And he can... Hex a 2-4 if he doesn't find anything oh, satisfying. Holy oh, A healing wave. wave. Oh, goodness. And class cards are weighted in favor 
uh, of neutral drop. So we'll see if he can win this. He's going to go back up to full health. No, it's the Hobby Chow, the worst in the deck. <laughs> it's still a reasonable heal uh, with seven. So. Wow, Jolt Scarab coming in as the uh, as the MVP for a Shaman. I never would have yeah. uh, would have seen that coming. Yeah, yeah. I imagine this is. Oh wow, I was expecting him to actually charge that in, but he doesn't. And I, I guess playing more of a long game now as Kaka sure, realizes sure. is, is going to have to be the case now that uh, Cipher did pick up a little bit of a way to heal. And Hex plus Lothab this turn really gives Cypher a peace of mind that he's not going to die and he's going to buy himself a little bit of time. Definitely. Um, this Keeper, not looking not looking so good all of a sudden. Uh, this board. Yeah. Uh, Muskaka definitely still has that Savager left in the deck. Uh, certainly what he wants to be playing for. And even though... Uh, even though... Oskaka doesn't have a way to finish the game immediately. Uh, Cypher really doesn't have uh, a quick way to end the game either. So with the shade still being hidden, it'll always be a threat for lethal on the board, and especially so now that the uh, the Lepernum has made its way onto the battlefield. So that'll be yeah, definitely a, a combo finish on the horizon for Oskaka if he's uh, given enough turns to get to it. So it's sort of a race at the moment between right, right. Cypher getting Stone Claw Totem. <laughs> and Oskaka drawing Savage Roar, his second Savage Roar. But yeah, keep in mind that there, there is one Savage Roar gone, so Oskaka hasn't been through that much of his deck to the point where it's going to be likely for him to draw it. And Mukla doesn't help at all. Oh no. I think at this point, as Oskaka, you're just all in on the fact that you need Savage Roar, so I'd imagine he's just going to kill off the Searing Totem here to reduce the likelihood that sure. Stone Claw Totem comes out. Um, but act in actuality, next turn, if he draws Savage Roar, he'll, he'll have it through Stone Claw Totem anyway, because yeah, yeah, his cause shade would be 7, damage. so plus the 12 damage uh, from the just the Trains alone. Right, and he does have, or Cypher does have 9... 12, 13, 14, 15 damage on his side of the table, so theoretically hoisting a 2 turn clock over Oskaka's head if he would so choose. But Oskaka does have the ability to kill off the, the zombie chow to perhaps extend that mm -hmm. to the third turn. So yeah, he does have he does have a decent amount of time to hit uh, that last Savage in his deck. Not quite sure how many cards Oskaka still has left. But uh, yeah, I suspect you're right. I just want to uh, get rid of that Stone Claw Totem and keep the, uh, keep the, or sorry, the uh, Magma Totem and keep the Stone Claw Totem a bit. Yeah. All right, he. <laughs> Thank you. He <laughs> really is on a two-turn clock anyway. Right. So right. King Mukla just makes it more difficult for Cipher Ooh. to leave those up on the board. So seven damage, fourteen damage on board. Four more damage from Flank Tongue is eighteen, nineteen, twenty from the bananas. Flank Tongue definitely a solid pickup for Cipher. Um, not really helping his clock at all, but may. Uh, Mayhaps uh, keep his keep his creature selection at a premium as far as yeah. what he wants to be getting rid of. Um, he does have those bananas, so Oskaka definitely in a, a do or die position here. Mm -hmm. A draw or die, rather. <laughs> yeah. So he's gonna keep. He, the thing is, he wants to clear off Mukla while still giving himself a two turn clock, and it, it's a pretty easy thing to do. He just has to trade in a way that gives him. Uh, all of his creatures alive. So it's Flame Tongue Till or sorry, pff, Savage Roar <laughs> or Bust here for Oskaka. Can he do it? No, he can't. Now he just has to think is there a way for him to survive while still keeping his hopes of drawing Savage Roar alive? He can charge the Druid of the Claw, he can kill off the Zombie Chow, which would put him back at 18 health. And I mean, he could sort of try and play a long game with this if he wants to forcing the trades out he could use that force of nature defensively here if he runs all of those in if he runs the force of nature into the five two and kills off the low that he could end up with uh just the the four power fire guard on the table and the zombie chow um i don't think yeah i think oskaka is definitely going to find a way to dig out of this particular next turn lethal but uh, not the position he wants to be in, definitely. And uh, Cypher having uh, quite a few damage-oriented outs uh, off the top of his deck. Yeah.
But this could be a grinding game for Oskaka. He's got a lot of, you know, high power creatures still left in his deck with Fell Reavers. Right, right. And Crackle off the top is decent. It gives him a good chance to just kill off this shade. Especially with that, uh, that spell power, definitely something that he wanted to see. And, you know, suddenly Oskaka left with with no creatures on the table, uh, could be could be facing down this two-turn lethal once again. Yeah. All right. Max roll. There's the Fell Reaver. And he can protect that sucker behind a Drew to the Claw. Hmm. That's a really good draw, actually. It really is, because putting him on a, uh, a four damage out off the top is really not that unreasonable. Um, yeah. Well, assuming that uh, Cypher will definitely have to kill off that, that Druid of the Claw if he doesn't have uh, a comparable removal spell. But mm -hmm. a Justicar, or a Tuscar Totemic, rather, off the top for Cypher. So some, uh, some Flame Tongue potential at the moment for him. Yeah, we will see. Innervate burn, Lepernome burn, Swipe burn. So a uh, little bit of direct damage there, but it's not too bad in the end. Sure, and also his uh, worth noting his second swipe out of the deck. Mm -hmm. Druid of the Saber. So this allows him to clear off the Fire Guard Destroyer and... Presumably go face. Just afterwards. go face and clear off the... Searing Totem and well, actually, it's guaranteed Stone Cold Totem next turn. Yes, yes, it is. So, uh, he has to, you know, find a way to get through that. Hmm. What if, what if he had saved that and just hero powered uh, face instead of hitting the one one? Just gained the life. Oh, I don't know. That's four. It would have been four, seven, eight, nine. He would have been able to clear off damage. the he would have been able to clear off the fell reaver with the damage on the board, though. True, 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 true. So, uh, fire elemental doesn't allow him to kill off this, but he does have the guaranteed stone claw totem. So, how many outs does he have right now? Oskaka has second Jude of the saber. He's got second living roots. He has savage roar and the second forest. Yeah. Second Force of Nature. All of those cards that were discarded aren't out, so there's a. I think there's a oh good boy. likelihood yeah, that he yeah. draws something that allows him to get through here. Druid of the Saber does it! Oh my goodness. Wow. And he finds a way to win. I'd say there was actually a good shot, because there was a lot of cards in those yeah, deck that allowed him to push through. I'm sure more so. than we mentioned, but... Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Maybe not. Living Roots... Drew to the Saber, Force of Nature, Savage Roar. Um, yeah. That's number two. Okay. <laughs> but that's uh, Oskaka taking the series. So Oskaka comes out of the group in first place. First player to move on to the playoff stage. So we'll be seeing him in the future for the Hearthstone Champions League. But we have one more match remaining, I do believe. It is going to be the Decider match which is going to be uh, Cypher versus Stan Sifka. Losers out of the tournament. Winner joins Oskaka in the playoff stage. But before we do that, we do have to go to a break. But don't go anywhere. The conclusion to Group D.